You are listening to the Bright Life Podcast, all about ways to stay inspired, chase your dreams, and find more gratitude in the highs and lows of the journey. I'm your host, Jessica Johnson. I'm a business owner, a part-time digital nomad, a self-growth junkie, a believer in other big-hearted women, and am all about sharing tips, tricks, lessons learned, and encouragement so we can all live our biggest, brightest lives. You ready? Let's do this. Hi, gorgeous. Welcome to today's episode all about how you don't need permission from someone else. You can actually give yourself permission and qualify yourself for whatever you have a dream to share, to teach on, to mentor others on, to put out in the world. Because I know there are some of you, if you're anything like me, who maybe always have a tendency to feel like you need that one extra certification or degree or to say that you are qualified to share what you want to in the world. And what I want to offer to you instead is that you don't actually need someone else out there to make you worthy of sharing what's on your heart. You don't need permission from someone else to do what you feel called to do and to share whatever your message is. So I want to share a few ideas around that to shift your perspective and hopefully give you a fire to get out there and share what you have in your heart to share because there are people waiting for you to do it in your way. Now, obviously, I'm not talking about going and becoming a doctor if you don't have a medical degree or things like that, right? That should be obvious, but I know someone probably is thinking it like, I'm not going to go tell you to go do something that you actually do need to have a certain medical education around or something like that. But I know that as women, we tend to wait um, sometimes for people to tell us that we can finally share that thing, that we're finally qualified, that we have enough of an education and even studies will show that in job interviews, women will wait until they have like 90% of the qualities before they'll go and apply, whereas men will wait for a much smaller percentage before they go in and believe that they're qualified and sell themselves as so. So I want to just give you a little fire that you're probably a lot more qualified than you think you are um, and your voice is needed wherever you are um, in whatever stage you're at. So Here's an example. Um, With starting my business, I started to find that I almost always felt like I needed one more certification. So in my first business, which was more in the health, uh, wellness, holistic health coaching, I had spent, you know, a considerable amount of time in nutrition classes and very rigorous testing and uh, making sure, you know, that I had a certification so I could go and counsel people on nutrition and wellness. But then once I got into business, I started to find that I didn't feel like that was enough, that I needed now to go and get another certification on how to handle more of the emotional side of food. Um, And then I felt like I needed another certification on business and how to build an online business. And it went on and on. And I started to realize it wasn't so much about needing additional education. It was really just a pattern in my head that wanted to increase my own confidence by going and getting more training or more qualifications from someone else saying that I could go do this thing. And so maybe that resonates for you where you are dreaming of a career change or you have something, you want to start an online business, you want to write a book, you want to start a podcast, but there's part of you that's saying, oh my gosh, I need to go back to school for this. I need to get a four-year degree. Um, I can't possibly do this yet. I need this, that, or the other thing. And I want to encourage you to take a look at that because yes, Education is very valuable. I have, you know, been so encouraged and um, inspired by all the online courses that I've taken. They've really helped me. They've accelerated the timeline in many ways. But if you're going to those things, waiting for that to be the thing that gives you confidence, I think in actuality, what's going to give you confidence is actually getting out there and beginning to do your work and beginning to get feedback in the real world and beginning to just get out there and try. There's this tendency to want to have so much information before you ever begin and 
hoping that that will be the thing that will protect you because you like researched all your options. And, you know, I get it. I wanted to, I had everything planned out before I began my businesses. I had pages and pages. I used to work on overnight flights and be like the only light on making my business plan, making sure I had the pricing just right and the niece just right. And what I was really surprised to find when I got into it is that you just don't know that stuff until you get into it. And so for you, just a little encouragement there to look with a different awareness of, am I taking this degree? Am I going back to school because I truly need this education? And if so, great, keep going. Or am I doing it because I need more confidence? And if so, what's going to give you confidence is actually getting out there, is the way you speak to yourself, um, is the feedback you get from actually working with people and putting your putting your product out there and having people say, wow, this is amazing. Thank you so much. Um, It's gaining experience so that you do feel like you are more qualified because you have more experience, not just more training, if that makes sense. So that would be something to um, just look at. And the second thing that I would remind you of is that you only need to be a few steps ahead of whoever you want to serve. So you don't need to have every piece of every education in the entire world in order to be able to help someone. If you have figured out how, let's say, you know, I, I train writers a lot. And so if you know how to do writing, think about all the business owners who maybe love what they do, but they just don't know how to write a description for their website. They don't know how to do a social media post. You don't need to have 20 years of education in writing to be able to help them. You knowing how to write, you knowing how to communicate a message, you knowing how to articulate what they're kind of describing to you and you being able to condense it into a few sentences, that is a few steps ahead of them and that is really going to serve that business owner. That's really going to help them. And so whether it's in that writing field, whether it's in the health field of, you know, the fact that you have figured out um, how to meal prep, you know, that you have figured out how to get your daily activity in. There are people out there who don't know how to do that and you can still help them even without being the world's foremost expert in something. You can still help the humans that are a few steps behind you that are where you used to be still trying to figure it out and put the pieces together you can connect the dots for them the next few steps you can help them out and figure that piece and then they'll find the next expert who can help them at the next stage so you know again definitely get the information you need um, to be able to help someone especially when we're dealing with you know medical things but Also remember that you don't need to like know everything. You don't need to be the world's top expert in order to help someone who's just trying to piece together the next few steps of their journey and that you can absolutely help them with that part. And then when they're ready, they can go on to the next person. I think about it even with writing my first book because it's top of mind because it's about to come out soon. And, you know, for me, I really debated, do I self-publish? Do I go the traditional publishing route, you know, and apply to publishers and agents? And For me, I decided that I wanted to self-publish. There were so many pros and cons to both directions, but with traditional publishing, you know, it's typically a lot longer timeline. Um, You lose a bit of your creative control. You kind of, you know, let you sell basically these book rights and then it goes and takes on this life of its own with a publisher. And for me, I just thought you know what, I've spent so much of my life waiting for that like check mark from someone else. And, I, and when I really got still about it, that's kind of what I was looking for from traditional publishing. I sensed there was still part of me that wanted that feeling of like you've been chosen. And so I really decided that if I was honest about what I really wanted out of this, I wanted to share this message sooner. I wanted to get it in your hands as soon as I could. Um, I wanted to be able to have that as part of just my offering and my brand and be able to build from there and speak about it more. You know, I've written this book and I didn't want to have to wait two more years to share it. Um, I wanted to be able to share the message from my heart in the way I wanted to write it. And so for me, self-publishing, even though it took away a little bit of that feeling of you're worthy, you're chosen, I still felt like it was worth choosing myself in that instance. And it was worth me feeling like I choose this book in this instance. And so I don't know how that translates to whatever you are thinking about when I mention that. 
whatever experience you are in right now or situation you're you're working through but if there is a situation where you have you're kind of waiting for approval from someone else where you're waiting for someone else to qualify you to say that you're good enough to say that you're chosen that you're the one that can do this is there any way that you can qualify yourself that you can choose yourself that you can be the one to say you're worthy um, I'd like to just remind you that there are some people waiting to hear your message from you. There are some people who will only hear what you have to share because of the way you say it and your past experiences and what you've gone through and your personality and whether it's to the, the fact that you're more of a gentle presence or more of a funny presence or more sarcastic or more real and raw, like whatever your flavor is, there are some people who are going to resonate so much with that. And so it's like how my husband and I will watch completely different YouTube vloggers when it comes to travel, right? Because we're different people who resonate with different teachers. Even with like the health example, you know, my girlfriends and I, we're all trying to be healthy, but we have different ways of getting there. We have different gurus we listen to and different books we read and, and podcasts we listen to. And so kind of the same thing for you, whatever gift you have on your heart to share, there are some people who are only going to hear it from you. If you're thinking of starting a business, there are some people who are going to really resonate with how you do it and how you position yourself and the way you talk to them and what you offer. And so almost don't feel like it's all been done before or like you need some special badge in order to be the one to help people. Like there are some people who are really going to be grateful that you did things your way and that you got started when you did. So just a little message. If you have anything in your heart that you're thinking about starting, but you are thinking you need another degree, you need four more years to wait, you need a little more information, that's fine. Maybe you do. If you really need the education, maybe that is a piece of your puzzle and you get it. But then after that, consider setting a timeline and actually just getting out there and getting experience because that might be what actually gives you the confidence you're looking for what actually makes you feel worthy and qualified. Um, and so I would just encourage you to qualify yourself, to give yourself permission to be the one to help people, maybe even just a few steps behind you to help give them those steps so they can get to where you are and then they can move on with their journey. Um, but you are needed. And I hope that if you're waiting on permission from someone else, that you give it to yourself, you are qualified to be here because you are. Thank you so much for listening in. If this episode resonated with you, I have something you are going to love. Check out brightlifepodcast.com where you can download a free Bright Life Biz Starter Kit full of the steps that helped me go from a nine to five to starting a business, creating more freedom and finding fulfillment as my own boss. I hope it supports and inspires you further. Thank you so much for being here and I will chat with you again next week.